Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series of videos on programming a chess engine in C. Still not at the stage of printing out a board on the screen because I need to add yet a couple more things into the board structure before we can actually do that. What I want to add is something called a piece list. If you imagine us generating moves, say white is to move, we want to generate all the moves to white. You might think, well, how are we going to do that? Well, pawns is fairly easy. We have our 64-bit number where we can extract the bits from to know which squares the white pawns are on. No problem. For the other white pieces, you might think, well, we loop through each square in our array until we come across a white piece, and if it is, then generate the moves. Now, this is a fine way of doing it, but there's a much faster way of doing it, and that's to maintain something called a piece list. And the piece list is very simple. It's just another array, and we'll call it plist. And it's got, first of all, enough spaces for each piece type. And then we'll allocate, of each type of piece, there can be up to 10 of those on the board at any one time. Because in extreme cases, say you have two rooks at the start of your game and all eight pawns promote to rooks and you'll have 10 rooks on the board so we need at least 10 inside here. So how does the piece list work very quickly? We'll see this in a bit more detail when we actually start adding pieces to a board but let's say we're adding two knights to the board. So the first thing that happens is that all of the positions in this piece list, the values for each position in this array are set to no square. And then what we do is we simply say, in the case of the white knight, p, p list indexed by our white knight constant, which is 2, I think, if I remember correctly. Starting at 0 equals, and let's say e1. We add a knight to e1. Now say we want to add a knight to d4. Then simply the next piece in the array is set to d4, and so on until no more knights are being added. And what that means is, is that when we then need to loop through the white pieces on the board, rather than shoot through this array looking at lots of empty squares and skipping to the next, we simply have to say, OK, take the Pete's list, start with a white knight, start at zero, and keep looping and incrementing this index here until the value here returned is no square. And then we know we've hit the last piece in the list, and we don't need to look anymore. And in the long run, this this saves a lot of uh, time and makes your program, or well, it made mine when I first started, a good 20% faster during move generation, in fact, during the general search, just by adding a piece list in, in this way. Of course, you do, when you're making and unmaking moves during the search, then have to also deal with the adding and subtracting pieces out of these piece lists. But it, uh, but despite that, the overhead is a lot smaller by doing it in this manner, rather than looping unnecessary through all of the boards on the ga uh, the, the spaces on the game board, especially ours, which has 120, and border squares, which aren't even on the game board. Okay, so that's one thing we needed to add to our structure. Now, one more little thing we need to do, and I want to talk about, is assertions. At the top of this file here, we're going to include stdlib, I think, dot h so the standard library and we're going to add some code that i found in a book called beginning programming in c++ and i've used ever since i saw it because it's very very handy and it looks big and complicated but it isn't it's saying if debug isn't defined then define a macro called assert and an argument in but don't actually do anything so this just does nothing else, so otherwise if debug is defined, as it is in this case, also define a macro called assert, argument n, and say that if n is false, then print to the screen what failed, on what date, on what time, what file, and at what line, and then exit the program with an error. So basically this is uh, another version of the assert in C. But I preferred it when I found it in uh, this book beginning, I think it's beginning programming in C++. I can't, I'll have to look up exactly which book it is. So the way that works is, it's very simple. If I go now to main and I do int num equals 2 and 
int, let's say, nuts equals four. And now I could say assert num equals nuts. And that's obviously incorrect because they're not the same. So oh, I haven't uh, compiled for ages. I'll have a go at doing it and see what happens. It seems to have compiled. Now if I run vice, and now you can see it said that the expression num equals nuts failed. And it says what time. And it even tells us what line and what file it failed in as well. And this is going to prove during the creation of the program invaluable because as you've already seen we start messing around with rather complicated indexes and things switching backwards and forwards and also particularly with the piece lists and in the functions we're going to do a lot of assertion checking to make sure that we're always within the expected bounds of our arrays a handy thing here is that obviously hits our performance but when we want to run sort of in full speed mode we simply need to take out this define here recompile and now when I run vice the program just runs and comes to an end and the assertion doesn't fail because it's not being run because debug hasn't been defined so for now we'll leave debug on and I'll take out this but you'll be seeing a lot more of the assert as we go through building the program okay there's one more little thing we need to do which I'm going to do in the next video which is define the functions and some globals we'll need that actually allow us to set and clear the bits in our 64-bit numbers representing where the pawns are on the board. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Hope that made a little bit of sense. Comments, questions, criticisms are welcome as always on YouTube.